all of our molecules change over, including those in our brain, so that all of my neurons are different now than they were a few weeks ago or even yesterday. We have all this different kind of sensory input from seeing, hearing, and yet I feel like I'm a unified person, that I have one sense of myself. Is this an illusion? No, I don't think it's an illusion. Uh, I think that, I mean, the conclusion that somebody want to draw is that you need a spiritual substance or soul that so speak, underpins the identity. But uh, I think you can be seen that that's not correct in the following sort of way. Uh, it would be possible if you had great power to take a soul and transform it radically, okay? One could take uh, the soul of one individual and wipe it completely clean of all memories and personality traits and put in completely new memories and personality traits, right? I wouldn't think I was Michael Tooley, right? So it seems to me that uh, the identity of a substance, be it a spiritual substance or a body or material substance, isn't what's crucial for personal identity. Because you could have the same soul with different markings on it. That's right, would yes. be a different different individuals. So it's Could not that's so it's not the substance that's making this personal identity. So so w what creates this personal identity? I think it's a matter of the right sort of causal connections, okay? I think what makes it the case that, you know, I'm the same person as a certain other person who lived many years ago and so on, Michael Tilly, is that there is a chain of connectedness uh, going from my mental states today, my personality, my memories go back to various experiences I had earlier, right? And so I think it's the right sort of connection. It doesn't have to be a direct connection for me now to me in the past. It can be in steps and so on. I remember what I did yesterday and so on, et cetera. So I think it's, it's continuity of things like memory, personality, traits, uh, basic beliefs, fundamental attitudes and desires and so on that make one the same person. And I think if you imagine those things being changed suddenly, if a few are changed, it's okay, but once you get all of them changed, then it seems to me you get a break, and you no longer have the continued existence of the same person. But you don't need some artificial, disembodied soul that undergirds all of this to give it this unity. There is a tricky question about what the right sort of causal connection is, okay, right? And so uh, a friend of mine used to look forward to the future when, you know, new and better bodies would be created, right? And all of his memories and personality traits would be so downloaded. Speak, would be downloaded into this other body, right? And so there's a question whether he would survive that sort of operation, or what you'd have is a replica, of the or uploaded into silicon. That's right. Yes, exactly. about. Yeah. Well, of course, the upload in silicon. There's a real question whether or not you have conscious experiences and so on, right? But there is a question about whether you need a tighter sort of connection, right? Whether you need the same brain even with different molecules continuing to exist, right? together with the causal connections, whether both are necessary, or whether it's only the causal connections and continuity that matter. So if, if, you, if you have the personal identity and you, and you take all of the information from one brain and put it into another brain, mm -hmm. what you're saying is it's not clear whether the person exists or not. If you, tr if you make a, a wholesale transfer, technology is mm -hmm. a billion years from now. That's right. I mean, there are, there are two problems. I mean, one is that you could transfer it into two other brains, okay? And then the question is, you know, <laughs> which one is you, right? The other is you could, so to speak, transfer, but forget to destroy the one brain, right? And so uh, in both cases, you're inclined to say they're replicas, right? And so uh, there's a real question whether if you, you know, to speak, destroy the information as you're transferring it, I mean, then into the other thing, whether then uh, the person that exists at that point is identical with the person who previously existed. In that sense, it's a finer version of the cloning argument. If, if, if somebody makes a clone, which is certainly possible for you or I, that, that's not like us. That's like a twin brother. Or, mm, that's or, right, yes. Or, you know, it, it's, it's a completely different person with the same genetics. It's, it's exactly like an identical twin, mm -hmm. which is a separate independent person. So it's clearly a clone is, is not uh, a true clone. That's right. Uh, so it's absolutely crucial to distinguish between creating a replica of something and so bringing about the continued existence of that thing. And I say what is clear is you need continuity because of causal connections. But you may need a bit more. You may need something like continued existence of the brain uh, in order to have uh, identity rather than uh, simply a replica. And why would that be the case, though? If, if the person is only the brain, mm -hmm. which is a physical substrate, and there is information encoded in that substrate, however complex. If you could capture every to the last bit, you would still say that there's a possibility that would not 
be you, but would still be a, a replica. Act like you. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 people would think it's you, but not really you. Well, here's the word. I mean, the feeling is that whether or not it's you shouldn't depend upon what's happening out there elsewhere in the world, okay, right? And so if we transfer the information in your brain into a, another brain, okay, right? On the one hand, if that's the only transfer of information we do, right, you may be tempted to say, oh, that's still me, right? But if the information could have been transferred to another brain, if it had been, then it looks like you can't say that both of those are you, and that needs to be considered more carefully. So the idea is that if personal identity doesn't depend upon what's happening elsewhere, then there's a problem about the case where you only get one transfer of information because if there had been two, there'd no longer be identity, even though the thing would have been the same as far as... Or, the, or if you didn't destroy the one from where it came. That's right, yes, exactly.